Hello, Internet. This video is a direct follow up to the last video where I talk about this uh, skeleton project for making your own pet game. Uh, this video assumes that you have downloaded this thing, you've run it, you've looked at it, and you've said, oh my goodness, I want to do this. I, I want to try making my own pet game. I want to modify this thing. Um, so if that's you, <laughs> carrying on from the previous video, the next thing you really want to do is, as I mentioned, install an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. It's a super crazy, fancy text editor. Again, has a bajillion options. You're going to need one. You can't just use Notepad. Like, super duper, trust me, you don't want to try to use Notepad. The experience is terrible. It's going to make learning so much harder. Um, and even with an IDE, the learning, there's a lot the IDE does for you, but you need to know what it does to know how to use it to, to, to help you out. And so that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to use an IDE. I happen to like using Rider, but they're very similar, and I'll try to call out the differences. Um, so I'm going to go through, through the code and make a couple changes. We'll try doing something like um, uh, get another pet. Sometimes when you explore, your pet will find a new friend, um, and then you'll have another pet in your house. We'll, so we'll do that and, and see how that goes. So. Uh, if you have downloaded Visual Studio Writer or VS Code, any one of them, and installed it, uh, this.sln file, petgame.sln, that stands for solution. I don't know why we can't use more than three letters. They could if they wanted. Silly history reasons why people like to prefer three letters, but whatever. Uh, this should now have a fancy icon for me because I have Writer. It's this little uh, purple square thing. Uh, if you have Visual Studio or, or VS Code, it looks like something else. But regardless, you double click this. And now it's going to open, you know, it's like you found your doc file and you, you want to open Word. You can just double click the file and here we go. Um, you could also, if you, um, you know, if you already have Visual Studio or Writer or whatever already open, you can do file open and find your way to this SLN file. Yes, it, this part is basically the same as using any kind of, you know, if you've used Photoshop, if you've used MS Paint, if you, you know, whatever, you know how computers work. Um, in here now, uh, we're going to get into some codes. So there's a lot here, right? There's a lot of folders. What, what in the world have, has even been opened before my eyes? You probably won't see this. Um, I've opened this previously, so it's it remembers where I last was, right? Um, so let me let me kind of go over the the folders, and I, I think the most interesting one to start. So if we look at Pet Game My House, um, these are all different pages on this website, and you can find them. Here's the one called My House. That looks promising. Um, it says My House at the top. Here's my house. If you don't know any HTML, I think HTML would be maybe one of the first things to kind of get a hold of and play with. Um, you could start putting other text in here, right? You might say, my house, um, here are all your pets. You know, you can do some stuff like this. So let's make this simple change. This is, you know, HTML. Do you know about the paragraph tag? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe you should, if you don't know any HTML, learn a little bit about that. Uh, regardless, whatever changes you make, you will need to stop running the, the thing. And you may have, uh, from the last video, I, I ran this on the command line, .NET run. Um, I'm actually not going to do that anymore, because one of the cool things with the IDE, oh, but I should call it a difference here. So we have a run button in Visual Studio and Writer. In VS Code, you won't, uh, I don't believe. So in VS Code, you will need to keep using .NET run to uh, run the, the, the program. Um, I'm not using VS Code, so I'm just going to hit the Run button up here. And it has the same effect. It's going to run it. Um, there are some other things you can do when you run through the IDE. So uh, I'm just going to go back to this page and reload. Oh, I have to log in anyway. OK. Um, and we should see my change. Here are all your pets. So here's my change. Fun. We've made a simple change. We've put on some text. Um, and again, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this. If you know HTML, you might start doing tables and, and divs and background colors and aligning things better. Uh, like, well, you know, why is this alignment so weird <laughs> where the Explore button like kind of pokes out here? If you've got an eye for um, aesthetics and you know some HTML and CSS and maybe even some graphics, you can already start doing a lot. Um, but there's also, if that's not your skill set, it isn't really mine. If you look at Poppy Seed Pets, you can see how simple that game looks. Um, let me let me just log in here. Um, it's a very simple game. Also, it's very slow for some technical decisions I made that I kind of regret. Um, but anyway, <laughs> once it pulls up, 
uh, you, you can see it's, it kind of looks the same as that page. Oh, this is embarrassing. This is this slow. I'm going to pause. Oh, never mind. I'm not. Um, cool. So the reason it goes so slow, don't make this mistake for your game, is when you log in, it catches up your pets on everything that they've done since the last time you logged in. Um, and it's just kind of easier to program that way, but it makes things take a lot longer. Like it's still doing it. Now it's saying, oh, I'm going to catch up the pets a little more. It took me so long last time I gave up. Now I'm going to do a few more. Okay, but you can see <laughs> the game is very simple. The, the, this is the extent of my graphical abilities. So if you're graphically inclined, you can already make something 10 times more beautiful than I can uh, without doing much code or any code at all. So anyway, that's one avenue. Let's do another avenue. We've added a little bit of HTML. Cool. I'm not going to demonstrate making things pretty because, as mentioned, I cannot. But let's change the code. Let's add a new action for the pet. One of the most useful things that the IDE, I don't know, there's a lot of useful things, but one of them that is super duper useful, all these things that you see um, that you might wonder what they mean, you can get more information about them. Hovering is one thing. <laughs> I didn't even mean to demonstrate that, but you can do that. Uh, but you can also right click and say, I want to go to where this thing was declared. So um, it, depending on what you click on, that's going to be weird. Like if you say, oh, who invented the P tag, right? That's going to be a little harder. Um, I think it will try to take you somewhere. Yeah, where is it? OK, that's weird. I don't know. What, I've honestly never looked at this before. This is apparently what how the P tag in HTML is declared. Less useful. Uh, what might be more useful is something like this, pet card. That sounds like it's awfully specific to the game. So we can say, I want to go to where that was declared, defined, whatever. And here it is. And here's the pet card. So again, if you know a little HTML, or even if you don't, you might guess. We see image, uh, images, pets, got some sort of SVG, uh, level, level, energy, energy, right? We can see all these things. So from that other page, and I'm going to close this, this window here. I'll go back to my house. So we're at my house. We see my house. We see this pet card. Oh, OK, pet card. That's a thing I can use. That's a thing that was created somewhere. Something else you can do that's very useful in the ID. So we jump to this. And you might be like, well, where am I in the files? Right? It still says my house. Um, Visual Studio has a similar button. I forget what its icon is. But this is to show you, it's like whatever you've got open on the right, show me where that is on the left uh, on, on my little you know, my folder of, of files. So here's the pet card. And you can see it has a file. This is cheating. The, the I mean, this is another thing that the IDE is doing that is useful, but maybe confusing. It looks like this file is inside that file, but that's not really what's happening. Um, and you can confirm that for yourself by going in. Let's see, it was, uh, where are we? Components. So here's the pet card. The files are actually side by side, but the IDE is smart. It realizes that these two files are very closely related. And so it's going to do this kind of display for you. Um, so again, if you know any HTML and CSS, this is the CSS that is specific for this pet card. Whatever you write here for your, your style sheets won't apply anywhere else, um, which is a kind of different thing if you haven't worked with a component-based framework to throw more scary words out there. Uh, feel free to Google any of this stuff or ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT is really cool. <laughs> you should use that if you're not already. Uh, ChatGPT is incredible. And it can help you with programming. You can ask it to do things. Uh, oh my gosh, I, would, I almost feel like I want to demonstrate that. Maybe we'll try it as we um, work on this thing. So. You know what? Let's try. I haven't done this before. Let's try asking ChatGPT some questions. So I'm going to give it this code and say, hey, I want to add another action. Can you add another action? Let's pretend. I mean, you're a smart person. You can probably look at this and say, I know what a button is. I get this explore. I know that I could copy paste this and add another button. That's pretty obvious. Um, and then you'd probably change this text, right? You can probably start to see how that would make sense. What is do explore? What is do feed? Well, we know now that cool, crazy tool of jumping to the declaration. It's actually in the same file just below. Here's do feed, do feed, do explore, do explore. So you might be able to figure this out on your own. But let's try just to demonstrate like chat GPT is a wonderful tool. Um, so I'm going to open it up. Oops, chat AI. And let's ask it. Um, I um, can you add a make friends button to the following code? And I'm going to paste it in. Oh. Assume you want um, the Make Friends button to allow the user to add the pet to their list of friends, you could add a new button to the existing code as follows. <laughs> and you can see it does some coloring too. Um, ChatGPT knows about programming and they've, they've added this feature. They know programmers are going to want to use it. So 
let's try and just copy it as is. It's a little dangerous. Sometimes it, you have to keep an eye out on chat GPT. Sometimes it does some crazy stuff that's not correct. Um, and it'll tell you what it, we, it did. And a new button was added for, uh, after the explore button. It's on click attribute is set to a new method. Um, so we're getting some more technical terms in here that if, you know, depending on how much programming you know, I mean, you could ask it and you could say, uh, yeah, what is a method? In computer programming, a method is a collection of statements or instructions that perform a specific task or action. Again, ChatGPT is an incredible tool, um, and I would really recommend using it. You could Google for this, um, and you might want to Google if you see anything that looks fishy to you in any way, or you go, is that, or you feel like you're missing something, or you just want to double check, Google, because sometimes it lies and it's very confident. It, it, it never, the tone, right, is always like, this is the truth. <laughs> sometimes it's not the truth. But you can, even if you do, if you know no programming and you just learn 80% accurate things, like that's huge. And, and you might have some misconceptions and you'll run into them and, you, and you'll figure them out. But, and I think chat GPT is better than 80%. Um, so anyway, I'm getting distracted. We've asked it to add a do friend method. Um, so let's, let's try some other things. We can see that there's like this do feed and do explore. Um, we could try to like, let, let's, let's try. I don't know how well it's going to do with this. Um, uh, so for the code above the, uh, do feed method looks like this paste it in. Um, could you write me a, and then what was it? What did it call it? A do add friend method. Let's see what it does. I'm really curious to know. Sure. Here's an example implementation and we'll see where it's wrong. Check if the pet is already a friend. All right, so that's already fallen apart. I don't know where it got the idea that there's my friends. Um, my friends add a pet. Uh, you would need to define the storage mechanism for the list of friends. All right, so it's it's fallen apart a little bit here. <laughs> By searching the my friends list. So I mean, this is a good thing. It says, okay, it thinks there's a my friends list. Let's go ahead and test this. Um, here's another really useful feature. Uh, this is the same keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio and in Writer. I don't know what it is in VS Code. If you hold Control and Shift and press F, Control Shift F, you can look for something anywhere in all of your code. So in, in the whole solution, recall that we opened a solution earlier. Um, my friends, it says there's nothing. Maybe that sounds suspicious to you and you're like, well, I see the word energy. Can you find energy for me? Okay, it found energy. This is working. It finds energy. It finds it in even some weird places that you might not expect. Um, but energy is around uh, in the game. But friends list isn't. So, okay. ChatGPT wasn't able to help us here. That's okay. I wasn't expecting to use ChatGPT or ChatGPT. Goodness, can't speak. So let's write it ourselves. Um, and, I'll, and I'll walk through it and explain some of the things. So I'm going to make a new thing called do add friend. And I will use these as an example. So there's a lot of crazy words here. And it, it is difficult. Like, I want to teach people to program. But, like, I look at, like, private async task. I don't know what to tell you. I, like, it's, it's, I mean, I can explain them. But you're going to get lost in the weeds on, on some of these things. And that's, again, I, I, in the previous video, I said, you know, start Googling for any of these words you see. But it is hard because you're going to you'll end up down some rabbit holes and it is hard. It's hard to learn how to program from nothing. Um, so for now, let's just say I don't know why it says a private async task, but I'm just going to copy what it's doing. This is interesting. So I have another AI thing. There's a plugin for um, all the big IDEs called GitHub Copilot. It's by GitHub um, and it will autocomplete a bunch of like in a bananas way. Um, this thing also costs money. Uh, ChatGPT is free. There's a paid version that I've paid for. Uh, GitHub Copilot is free for, I think, like a couple weeks or a month, and then you have to pay for it. Um, it's a great tool, though. I mean, if, if you don't mind 10 bucks a month, uh, go for it. Um, I'm going to try and ignore it, because I'm going to assume you don't have that. So press escape. Um, and, but let's start writing this, this thing. So I know I need to add something called do add friend. And by the way, so more on the colors. Red. I think we know there's a cultural understanding that red equals bad stop, something's wrong, uh, and it is, and you can see when you hover, cannot resolve symbol, do add friend. Oh, the technical language, it drives me crazy. Um, again, making this video and wanting to teach people, cannot resolve symbol, like, come on. 
Um, OK, <laughs> it doesn't exist. Um, so let's let's make it exist. Do add friend. And uh, we can see that pet, pet is here. So I'm just going to kind of copy copy this, this, this structure. So by the way, what is happening here? We have this name. Um, what is what is pet pet? So I don't know, depending on how much programming, you know, uh, this is looping. This is saying for each pet in my pets. You can almost read that as English if you ignore some of the weirder words in parentheses and at signs. Um, so for each pet in my pets, for all of my pets, I'm going to I'm going to do this for all, every single one. I'm going to do a pet card that draws that pet. And it seems that we're providing the image, the name, the energy, and also a bunch of buttons, right, for all of the pets that I have. Um, so and for when now we say we want to feed a particular pet, it's like, well, which pet? And when we want to explore, well, which pet is doing the exploring? And so we, we give that pet to this method, this do feed method. Um, we, we pass the pet into it. Um, so that's what's going on here. And if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, again, depending on how much programming you, you know, um, let's just copy the basic structure. Um, and we can see there's some things here, like if the pet doesn't have enough energy, then we say you don't have enough energy to make a friend. So let's, let's copy paste that in and tweak it. Let's say that you need five energy um, to, to make a friend. And I'll, and I'll edit this text here. So we'll say, um, uh, pet needs five energy to meet a, a new friend. All right. Uh, return, by the way, I mean, just says, and we're not doing anything else. So I don't know if I said this or so much to imply, right? It, it goes line by line. So we say, if the energy is less than five, then we're going to show this. And then we're going to return, which means we're out of here. We're, do we're done with this method. Um, otherwise, we're going to keep going. So let's subtract off the energy. Uh, that makes sense. Um, Minus minus is shorthand for minus equals one. Uh, we would like to minus equal five. It just means whatever the value is, we're going to reduce it by five. So we said it needs five energy to do this. So we're going to take five off. Um, and now we need to somehow make a new friend. Uh, so this is an interesting um, suggestion by GitHub Copilot. I kind of wonder. So a nice thing about GitHub Copilot versus ChatGPT is that GitHub Copilot is looking at all the code, right? For ChatGPT, we have to paste in some code. And we hope that based on what we paste in, it's going to figure out the rest. But it was like making up stuff like my friends, which doesn't exist. Copilot, because it's right here looking at all your code, it, it knows that there's no such thing called my friends. So it's not going to suggest something so ridiculous. Um, every now and again, it does still suggest things because you, know, you are making new content. And so it assumes, oh, you want to do something new here that I haven't seen before. So it tries to figure that out using all this fun new AI stuff. Um, let's just go with this, because uh, I would probably have typed it anyway. So how do I explain all these, these weird things? Um, we're making a new pet. So I don't know. Again, programming is difficult to explain, depending on how much you already know. Um, we're making a new thing called friend. Var means we, I want to make this new thing. I'm going to call it friend. And I'm going to assign it something, right? What, what is a friend? What is friend? Friend is a new pet. Um, and it has these properties. It has a name. It has an image. It has an owner ID. Um, how do you know that these properties are available for a new pet, by the way? We've seen this word pet, and we could also guess that that's something specific to, to the game. So let's, on any, any one of these, let's go to the definition of pet. Uh, and again, lots of weird things to take apart here with curly braces and colons and everything. But we can see these same things, like name, image. I understand that those are things that a pet has level experience. This is apparently a list of things that pets have. Here's its energy. Um, four. I, that's the default value. Maybe that kind of makes sense. Maybe not. Here's a little uh, here's a little method. Again, we see these like public async void, whatever, right? All these weird things, private, public, whatever. Here's the nice green text we've seen before. That, uh, this is a method for gaining experience. Kind of is making sense, maybe. Um, then you could add more if you wanted to. I don't know, maybe you Maybe you would like a function that uh, adds or removes energy rather than doing it out here. I don't know. We're getting into to some other stuff there. Uh, but anyway, here's here's what how a pet is is defined. Um, something else would happen. Suppose you didn't know that stuff. Uh, we'll get some squiggly red underlines. That's another way the IDE tells you, hey, I'm I'm not happy with this code. It's not going to work when you try and run it um, because it says what does it say here? Oh my gosh, require. Oh, I can't select it. Required member pet image must be set in the object initializer. We have more fun words. Um, this is something else your IDE will do for you as you start to type. This isn't you don't need the, the AI for this. Um, it tells you all the kinds of things you can set for a pet here. 
Um, so right, what it's trying to tell us is we need to say the image and we need to say the name. Those are required. Um, I'm just going to put back in the code. I'm pressing Control Z now. I'm going to put back what was in there before. I want to give it a name. Um, pet name's friend is interesting. That's I wouldn't have picked that for a name. I might have called it like Ralph or something. I don't know. Or maybe something better than Ralph. Um, the pet's image. So this is interesting. So what does this mean? So again, we have the pet who's adding the friend, right? We've modified their energy. Now this is saying whatever that pet's image is, let's give it to this new pet. That's an interesting decision. We could roll with that. Um, by the way, another folder that might be of interest to you, www root <laughs> contains images. And here's all the pet graphics. So here's the little guy. Um, you can make your own image and drop it in here. It doesn't have to be an SVG. You could draw it up in MS Paint. You know, let, let's do it. Let's draw a silly thing in Paint. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too hard. It's going to look really doofy, but let's do it. I'm not even checking the size. Um, what should this thing look like? I'll just do a circle uh, with a smiley face. Um, and oh, it can have little legs. And it'll have a little curly cue on the top of its head. All right, this is going to be a new pet. It's beautiful. Um, it has a transparent white, or sorry, a not transparent background. It's a solid background, so that's not going to look super great. Um, and let's put that in the location. So let's do pet game, WW root, images, pets, and um, I'll just call it black and white. That's what this that's what this pet is called. All right, and that should show up here, black and white. We have our silly black and white pet. <laughs> Um, fun. I don't know. I wasn't expecting to do this. So let's set that as the image instead. Um, so you might not necessarily know that this is the case, but, um, oh, and in fact, we are going to run into an interesting problem. Uh, the game, if we look at the pet card, um, is expecting SVGs. It actually hard coded it to say it has to be SVGs. Uh, that was an opinion I made. So let's go to the pet card. Um, so here we looked at this before. It says, I want to look at images, pets, whatever image you told me, and I'm going to put a .svg at the end. That's not going to work for me anymore um, because this guy has a PNG image. So I'm just going to take that off. Um, it's going to break something else, but we'll deal with that. Uh, this guy uses a PNG, so that's a change we're going to have to make to, to support different types of images. Um, the owner should be the same owner as the pet who's making the friend. That makes sense to me. Apparently wants to set the energy to 10 and the experience to 0. Sure, why not? Um, and by the way, if you hadn't set the energy to 10, let's go to definition again. Uh, this does have a default value of 4, so it will have 4. Um, you don't have to tell it the experience is 0. If, if there is no default value for a number, an integer, <laughs> you might remember integers from, I don't know, what is that, middle school math? Um, those are only whole numbers. Uh, but a default, if you don't specify 1, is 0. It's just going to do 0. Um, so you don't have to specify the zero, but it doesn't hurt to be explicit and clear to someone else looking at the code. Oh, it's set to zero. Uh, one more thing that we need to do, and, th and this wouldn't necessarily be clear at all. Um, so I mentioned in the previous video that this talks to a database, and, and all the stuff is saved. Uh, so when you you know when you revisit, it, it goes into a database. And a database, I don't know, I'm assuming you've heard of databases before. It's you can think of it as being like Excel or, or Google Sheets. It's a big spreadsheet with columns and tables. Um, and you can look at the database and see all the saved data. And um, actually, maybe, we'll, yeah, we will do that because we'll want to fix up the other pet um, pet image. So anyway, uh, the way that, that uh, C Sharp talks to a database, there's a few different languages to, or libraries, sorry, to do it. Uh, I'm using Entity Framework. That's one also made by Microsoft. Um, it's very popular. There are others out there. Um, but the Entity Framework is definitely a thing that you could find like a tutorial for on YouTube. And I call it out in the, um, here, in the libraries used. These are things that if you Googled, you could learn some things about. Um, again, there's going to be lots of assumptions. Depending on how much you know, some of the stuff is going to be really freaking confusing. Um, but, <laughs> but you can learn about these things. Um, and Entity Framework would be a good one. So something we need to do to put this, we've made a new friend. But after this method ends, this friend is gone. Like anything that we we do, like make a new thing, we said var I'm making a new thing, it's called friend. After this method is gone, so is this this new thing we've made, this new friend. It's gone too. Unless we put it somewhere more permanent. Um, so we're gonna put this friend more permanent somewhere more permanent. Um, I need to put it in the database. And this is some code. I want to make this a little simpler. Um, because it's a little wacky. There's a little bit of ceremony, as they call it in programming land. You've got to do these 
you got to do these silly steps that you have to do every time and, and it's like, ah, oh, the ceremony. Um, so anyway, we need to do this funny stuff to create a new DB stands for database, a DB context, a what, what's going on? I don't know, it's all very confusing. Um, but if you look at, uh, for example, do, do feed the pet, we do the same thing here. So we've adjusted the pet's energy, uh, but we do need to save that back to the database so that it's when you reload the page that the energy is still set to whatever it was changed to. So here we say, DB, I wanna update the pet. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We adjusted this pet's energy, but we also wanna add this new pet. And fortunately, it's called add. So to the database, we wanna add this new friend that we made. Um, yeah, there's some other stuff there. Like you can't just add anything. You can only add things that you have told the database how to store. It's a whole other thing. Um, we won't worry about it right now, uh, but then we should save the changes. One more thing. <laughs> Um, you might recall from the top of the list here that um, we're saying for each pet in my pets. And so it's going for all of your pets and showing the pet card and showing these buttons. Um, but we haven't done anything. You know, where's my pets? Where's that come from? Uh, it's somewhere on the same page I can tell you. Here it is, a list of my pets. And we can see here that there's this more funny database stuff where it gets all of the pets out of the database. So, I mean, this is a little weird, but we're saying from the database, from the pets, where the owner equals player info ID, some way to get the player's ID number, apparently. Uh, so we don't wanna get all of the pets in the database. Again, remember, this is a multiplayer game. You can log out and create a new account, and then you'll have two accounts. And you don't wanna pull out every player's pets. You only want the ones owned by the current player. So this is what this, this fun logic is. Um, but I would like to do this again. Um, now that I have uh, saved the pet, I would like to uh, make sure that my pets has this new pet. So I'm gonna go down here and do this. After we've saved changes, after we add the new friend, I'm going to re-get my pets, all of my pets. Just copy paste that same code below. Um, let's see that that works and then I'll, I'll talk about another thing. Oops. Where did it take my mouse? Okay. So, so sorry, I hit re, re, if you hit this rerun, it's gonna restart the game. Uh, I'm gonna log in. And so here's the thing I was alluding to. Uh, Roy's image is broken because you may recall it was automatically adding SVG, but I took that off. So Roy's image isn't gonna work, but we can make a friend. And here's a new friend. <laughs> so we are getting Roy's friend. Uh, and we could ask for a new friend, and we could ask for a new friend, and we can have all the friends we want. Let's fix up Roy's graphic, though. That's a problem. Um, so there's a couple things to do. Uh, one of them is, let's log out, and let's make a new account. I'm going to call, I'm going to be called Ben2, and I don't know, Madeline. That's the name of one of my cats from a long time ago. And I'm just typing nonsense things. So, oh, I think I probably did that in the previous something. All right. Even a new pet has... A, a no good image because it doesn't know anymore that it's an SVG because we took that out of the pet card. It used to say, it used to always put .svg at the end here and we've taken that off. So let's make it so that at least when you make a new account, we'll make sure that your new pets um, are working. So if we go back to pages, we can find the sign up page and sorry, I'll minimize this, this thing. Um, so here's where you sign up. Here's where you enter your name, your pet's name, your email address, your password. We have a sign up button. Um, interesting that doesn't have an on click like the other buttons we've seen before. There are reasons for that. There are more things to learn. Um, here's the do sign up though. So we do have another kind of method that looks like, you know, do feed, do explore. And by the way, using the word do is totally optional. That's a convention that, that I like for myself for this kind of reason is you look at the method and you're like, I don't know what user action makes this happen, but because it has the word do before it, that it is a user action. And again, not because that's a requirement of the language or anything, but I just decided as a human for me, Ben, programming this thing, I decided I'm going to make all of my user action methods start with the word do so that I can easily recognize them as I'm glancing through the code. And we've had this experience right now. I didn't see how this triggers do sign up, but it's called do sign up. And I see a sign up button. And, and by the way, it's up here on valid submit do sign up. But again, it, it helps to have these naming conventions. Um, and that's one I picked up from a, a, a different language entirely. Uh, I took a course and that was his naming convention and I liked it, so I stuck with it. So 
maybe same thing for you. Maybe you like that convention and you stick with it, or maybe you say, no, that's confusing. I want things more explicit. I'm going to call it like sign up user action, right? You can make up whatever you want. Um, make up something that you won't regret having to type all the time, um, but also is clear to you, is clear. I mean, it, hopefully not only clear to you, but clear to a friend if you want to show someone else. Maybe the word do, you know, fails in that way. It isn't necessarily that clear. So anyway, these are all things to think about. Um, blah, blah, blah. Here's some stuff. It says, I make a new player. Oh, I make a new pet. Little guy. All right. Let's do little guy SVG. It used to be an SVG. And let's just rerun and test that that works. Um, we broke it because we made a change somewhere else. And now we're going to fix it. That's a common programming thing, too, that we've accidentally run into. Um, so again, this is only going to affect newly made pets. The existing pets are still going to be broken because they've already been made and saved in the database. Um, uh, my current cat's name is Mia, so I'll say that Mia has a pet named Ben. We'll turn things on their heads. I don't know why. Let's log in. Great, Ben is working. How do we fix the other people? There are already some people who signed up for this game where, you know, when we added this feature, now pets don't have to be SVGs. They can be multiple kinds. Like, this is a real-life problem. Maybe not this exact thing, but this kind of thing happens, right? We've added a new feature. We broke some old stuff. Um, so we went and fixed it in the code. So at least new players aren't affected, but we do still have these old players who are affected by this change we made. Uh, they can make friends. Oh, we need five energy. Let's feed. We've made Ben's friend. <laughs> um, so yeah, how are we going to fix this? So... I mentioned, right, all these things are going in a database somewhere. One way you might fix this, this isn't necessarily the best way, but it certainly works for, for local development, is you can just open up the database and start poking in there and changing it, the data however you want. You can change the names of all these pets. You can change their level and experience. So let's do that. Um, I have somewhere looking at or modifying contents of the database <laughs> directly, right? Not through the code. You can do stuff through the code, as we've seen, modifying energy and making new pets and things. But what if you want to go and fix things because you made a mistake? So I'm going to run this thing called Heidi SQL. I've already downloaded it. Um, and you can, let's let's do it new. So I'm going to make a new one. And we'll call it a uh, pet game. Oops, I think I pressed enter. Oh, that's fun. Somehow it crashed. I haven't had that happen to me before. That's embarrassing. All right, pet game and network type. What? OK, that's weird. So I mentioned, I think, uh, that this is using SQLite as um, the database. And do I mention that in this readme? Doo -doo -doo. I sure don't. So I'll make sure to, oh, which uses SQLite. So I'll make sure to update this. Maybe I'll even put in a screenshot. So you want to select SQLite and then database file name. We need to find the file. So here we need to uh, navigate. Sorry, let me get in there. Uh, development, C sharp. And what was this called? Pet game? <laughs> so, what? All right, we need to locate the database file. Where the hell is that? Uh, fortunately, it's right here, <laughs> petgame.db. Um, so when you go into the pet game, pet game folder, it's going to be called petgame.db, and then you can open it. Uh, yes, let's save my changes. And here's your pet game database. You can see there's a list of pets, a list of players. This UI is also a little exciting, <laughs> but you can see we've got kind of a similar thing. List of stuff on the left, details on the right. Um, and I would like to look at the data. So here's some data. Here's all the accounts I made. Here's all the passwords. They're nicely hashed. Um, Mia and Ben. We can also look at the pets. So here we go. So here's when we, we might fix these. We know the, now that little guys are SVGs and it needs to end in SVG. So we can just click in here and edit it. Um, so this is a thing you can do. I would really recommend, except in dire straits, uh, not doing this uh, to production. Whoa, why is... Oh, you know what? I think it's crashing because I'm currently running that database. It's maybe not super thrilled about that. So let's stop <laughs> the game. Um, yeah, fun. That is, I've never had Heidi crash before on me. So Heidi SQL. Um, it's otherwise been very reliable and useful. Uh, no one's paying me to say these things. I legit like this tool. No, it's crashed again. That's very exciting. Well, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, maybe it's not... It, I've, oh, I've used it with SQLite before. I don't know. Can't explain it. Maybe uh, maybe you'll get a newer version with a bug fix or something. Um, but let's log in and check that I have fixed um, oops, these old ones. So b at b.com was the first person I was logging in as. And yep, now he's working. Roy and Roy's various friends that I adopted are all working in. Oh, oops, that was probably a weird way to do that. Yeah, let's log in. 
b2.com. There was one I think I didn't get. Yeah, that's probably the one. Um, I wonder if I'll be able to edit it. Or if it'll just crash again on me. That seriously is so weird. Um, all right. Dot SVG. And let's save it. You, have to, you just have to click. So you may have noticed after I edit it, it uh, puts a red thing. And that means it's changed, but I haven't saved it yet. And it doesn't save until you go off to a different uh, row entirely. So. so anyway, now it's saved. And if I press F5, oh, I need to log in again. Um, that's something else I want to fix. Uh, dot com. All right, Roy is now fixed. So now we've fixed up all the pets. So I don't know, was that a quick intro? How long was this video? Over 30 minutes? You decide. Hopefully this was kind of an interesting look into how you might build things. I honestly didn't think I was going to open up chat GPT or even fix old players. Like these are all good things, like good real development things that, that you will encounter and do. Um, did the code make a ton of sense? Depends on how much programming you know. Um, you know, all this wacky stuff with db context and i mean again there's a lot to learn um but hopefully there is enough this isn't a very big project but i really hope there is enough that you can find something that makes sense to you again if you know html and css or, or you can make some images then you can pretty up this thing a lot and if you but if you don't know that and you know code maybe a little bit of some other language and you can translate enough or even if not that if you can look at this and say okay i get what's going on with like oh, I feed it and it gets energy, or you might look at the Explorer, which we didn't look at in this video, and it's like, what's going on in here? <laughs> to do, make your own game. Um, maybe there are some things you could you could figure out here um, and, and make something else happen, right? Here's all the events. Um, if you want to start doing things like uh, in Poppy Seed Pets, there's all these items, right? Uh, and there's like a whole cooking system. You could start to make that stuff. Um, that's definitely a little more work. Um, I didn't talk much about uh, how things are stored in the database, but there are these um, different tables here. Uh, if you look up, or maybe even ask ChatGPT, um, you know, uh, with Entity Framework, uh, how do I make a new table? Um, and ask it and see if it will, you know, again, the, yeah, this is great. It's telling you how to do these things. So. That's interesting. It's telling you how to make a pet <laughs> because we've been talking about pets before. But you can correct it and say, uh, you know, actually, I'd like an item table or whatever. Um, try to piece these things together. Uh, again, it, depending on how much you know, it might be really hard. Um, and I don't know what to say other than keep trying and keep Googling and and uh, also uh, save your progress a lot. Um, you know, if you make a mistake in code, uh, you want to be able to quickly go back. Um, if you don't know Git, then I would just say occasionally make a zip of the game once you've got it at a good point, right? So if we go to pet game um, that lives in a directory for me called C Sharp, where I've got tons of other projects, so I don't open that up right now, but just right click and say zip this up, and make a backup, maybe put the date in there, and then keep going. And that way, if you ever you know get it to a state where it's totally broken, you're like, I don't even know what I did anymore, you can just go back in time. Um, or if you know Git, or if you want to learn Git, that provides you a, an even better way. Um, and uh, the IDE also has tools, by the way, for Git to make some of this stuff easier for you. So again, a million things to learn. Um, and depending on your level of experience, it, it's <laughs> it might be a lot. Um, but I hope, I hope that this can be a starting point for someone uh, to make something cool. Um, and I, I would love to know about it if, if you made anything. Um, let me know. That would be rad. Um, and again, if you've got questions about the um, pet game kind of template in general, I don't necessarily want to answer questions like, how do I use any framework? Because you can Google that or you can use free tier chat GPT to answer those questions. Um, but if you've got some specific questions or, or just need a little extra help, open up an issue here. Um, I might try and document things somewhere, uh, you know, based on your questions. Like, what are the common questions people are asking? And maybe I can, you know, put that in the in the README to to point people in the right direction. So, so anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I don't really know what I'm saying anymore, <laughs> as is so often the case at the end of these videos. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this is a fun thing you can have fun with. Goodbye. <laughs>